Ciao! In today's video, I want to share with you about the results of a technical exploration that uh, brings together and integrates a diverse set of technologies and platforms, ranging from classic spreadsheet applications such as Excel, and integrate them uh, with uh, serverless uh, runtime platforms such as Knative on top of OpenShift, as well as uh, rules for breaking intelligence and really integrate this intelligence inside of our spreadsheet application. Now you know the drill, when you see the helmet, it's really exploratory content, so this is a really experimental uh, technologies mixed together in order to really uh, bring uh, to the surface some good result of integration. The reason for this uh, content, this blog post, you will see a blog post down below as well as this video, is to share with you about this result of integration that actually originated as an inspiration by reading this book. Now, I will have more uh, about this uh, book later in the video, but uh, we will start by looking at the backend system and in this case at the rules. So. As I started to think about a pragmatic use case to really showcase this powerful integration, what I wanted to think of is some use case that had some realistic data that I could elaborate with, basically to have a reason to import them to Excel. And what I thought about is that I use a lot of IoT in every day. Uh, that is because from uh, smart devices, uh, smart home and so on, I know that there is a lot of buzzword circling around uh, this, uh, this concept, but I also believe that uh, when used correctly and subsequently can really uh, augment and in some ways improve our lives. So uh, what I wanted to focus on is that I have some smart devices that collect some biometric data for me basically once each morning where I wait myself, it also uh, measure my BPM at that time. And I just wanted to have a very simple set of rules uh, that were more tailored uh, to my needs. And what I did here, even if it is in DRL, I think that we can appreciate that they read very easily. So for instance, in the first rule, what I wanted to just uh, have a warning uh, potentially is that if in the morning or what I define for myself, in the morning, I get uh, some out of range uh, bit per minute. Uh, then I would like to have an advice about that. But as well, what I also noticed, started to notice is uh, that uh, it's really helpful for me to have some uh, warnings or advice when the trend over the past uh, five days, every skip day, uh, then it, it follows some certain trends. Now, these rules are pretty simple to define. And basically what I did is that I integrated my DRL rules instead of Quarkus by making use of some Drools version 8 Drools DRL Quarkus extension. You will find more details about this in the uh, linked code repository. So if you're interested to know more, uh, but this is also something that I wanted to really integrate in order to uh, make to its spaces and really to have some dog fooding exercises in making sure that they developer experience was on par to what uh, we would expect. Uh, this is uh, basically a Quarkus application. Uh, so what I needed to define as well is uh, some configuration. Now, the, the bottom part of this configuration settings, you will find some reference in some previous video. Maybe I will try to link it in some of the corners that explain on how you can build a serverless rules application thanks to an integration with Quarsus in a very easy way. And so these settings are discussed in that video. So I invite you to check it out. And basically just some standard configuration that I find it very helpful uh, for this type of use cases. The word of uh, maybe the only one that I would like in this video is that uh, as my deployment target on top of OpenShift and therefore Kubernetes is Knative, that this extension allow me to have a Knative service so that uh, this intelligent application will automatically uh, scale up, down, and auto scale to zero the moment that I don't need any further invocation or elaboration of rules, uh, evaluation of rules. The thing that I would like to highlight in this video, however, is uh, these uh, course settings. Now, this is because the REST API that I'm defining inside of this application will be invoked by some JavaScript-based 
um, application here. And so what will happen is that uh, the JavaScript-based environment will try to invoke these, uh, up, these REST API that are running on top of OpenShift, so course settings must be maintained. And what I did here is that I've tried to be a good citizen and follow the recommendation that you will find in the links of the Quarkus documentation, where it is uh, to really define the course origin settings and to make sure that those are uh, properly maintained. In this case, you will find the two entries. One is the Swagger UI. So as I go through uh, the Swagger UI, uh, then this is a settings that I that I do. And then the Azure Edge is because we will see in Excel, I'm making use of uh, some custom built-in function. So that is uh, served through, in this case, uh, as I operate on the on the worksheet, it comes uh, as the origin for this Azure Net. In, if you decide to build on this example, or let's say if you decide to experiment and take it further, then I strongly invite you to revisit these settings because you may need to extend to incorporate the server where you are hosting your Druze application or where uh, the, um, uh, the function is actually called from the Excel spreadsheet, so it may be using some other servers or another office add-in mechanism, for instance. So you might need to revise this setting. Now that's all there is to it, and the application uh, it's uh, here already on OpenShift, and it's ready to evaluate. Right now, it's currently auto scaled back to zero simply because indeed uh, nobody is operating on this application. Let's move now to see it. Uh, integrating it with Excel. Okay, so here comes the fun part and the different part uh, from the usual, at least from my side. So this is uh, an Excel uh, spreadsheet uh, that really integrates the intelligence service that we define with the technical rules of DRL that is currently running on top of Knative uh, with Excel. So as we can see here, we have some strange formula and uh, as I, Reevaluate that one, we will see that it's busy. And as we would expect, uh, the Knative service is auto scaling back and is giving us, as you can see, the result updated. So I can even do like this. Uh, so I'll just reapply the formula uh, to some of the rows. And as you can see, it's firing some requests to, those, uh, to that Knative service that we just defined and deployed and giving us back the result that we would expect from the rules. So this is the end result in this Excel uh, spreadsheet. Let's uh, delve a bit more on how I built this uh, spreadsheet. So as we were mentioning in the morning, thanks to these uh, smart devices, I take my weight and the uh, bit per minute at that time. It sometimes if it, it fails, as you can see here, there are some uh, uh, non-existing entries. And um, actually, this information, this data, this measurement is given to me in two separate uh, um, uh, CSV files. So what uh, I did here, and this is the part uh, that I really taken, started to take inspiration from the book, is that sort of like in my previous life, like we could say that way, I would have done just a couple of imports and then a VLOOKUP. But thanks to reading that book, I uh, started to get acquainted with this uh, Power Query. And what I did is that I merged together those uh, CSV file as a sort of like two data sources. Thanks to this editor, uh, you can do really much complex uh, type of data transformation and acquisition. And this is a, a tool that the books will show you on how to use it as well to integrate with, um, with the external system. Now, what I wanted to experiment and really sort of like the go beyond and taking all the inspiration from that great book is that uh, I wanted to experiment in making a custom function. And what we will see here is that uh, the the formula that basically you can see here is triggering this uh, custom function. And this custom function is just a simple TypeScript or JavaScript uh, a snippet that actually invokes asynchronously uh, that service over there uh, that we had on top of uh, OpenShift and Kennedy. And so basically what, uh, what you're doing here is that now it's taking time because 
potentially in the backend system, it was uh, auto-scaled uh, back to zero, and now it's scaled back to one, responding to my request. And now if we will give it just uh, a little time, we will see that automatically it will auto-scale back to zero again. And I think this uh, integration uh, of the customizable option that uh, the new Excel brings to you, brings to you together with the powerful serverless uh, nature of the deployment of this uh, rules application, it's really a sweet spot. Because now what will happen is that if we will wait just a little bit on this, um, on this OpenShift, if we don't uh, invoke the service again, and basically sort of like we can imagine uh, nobody in our company is operating on the spreadsheet and uh, needing to uh, re-update on, uh, on these measures, we will see that uh, it will uh, automatically scale back to zero. Here, you see it? So it automatically auto scale back to zero. So here, what I wanted to highlight as well is that uh, there are really many ways that you can possibly think about integrating these, uh, these external call of functions through Excel. Uh, this is just one of the uh, more nuanced way that I found that it goes beyond uh, what you will maybe find in the book. It's a bit, uh, I would say, more complicated. If you want some easier way, uh, this is the perfect segue to uh, to the book again. So. I think that uh, this book, it's really a good read. Uh, first of all, because it gives you a very wide portfolio of options on how to integrate Excel with intelligent application built with rules, uh, Cogito and the key sandbox. You will find many of the tooling as well on how they uh, really uh, match together in a sort of like a very common scenario that I've seen in industries and business alike. So this is a, a very good read for that. And also it's a good read because it really inspires you potentially like me to really uh, take those exercises and really as well push it to other boundaries and other integrations. So with that, I hope uh, this was uh, an interesting and sort of like unusual content. So that's why I t tend to wear the helmet. Uh, for this kind of video because it's really experimental in nature, but I think that it uncovers really powerful way of integrating words that otherwise seems uh, difficult to match them together, but actually they can match very easily. And as well, if you look at how little code, and especially because I'm not very uh, proficient with JavaScript or TypeScript in the way that I would like, but it really took me almost nothing to really come up uh, with this, this solution. And of course, there are ways that you can industrialize and standardize on this. For instance, you can think about building your own office add-in, or as I mentioned, you will find more ideas on how to integrate that uh, in this book that I invite you to read. So with that, I thank you for as well for staying uh, with me uh, in this uh, sharing of a technical exploration. And as usual, you might know that uh, Maybe you're watching this video and you're not subscribed. So for that, I invite you to take the message from another instance of me. I hope it is helping you connecting the dots like this powerful connection. Don't forget to like and subscribe.